Welcome to It's a Woman's World, a show which discusses any and all topics under the sun from a woman's point of view. Our show believes that all women at all times should be treated with respect. Here's today's moderator, Dr. Susan Strauss. Hi, and welcome to It's a Woman's World, where once again, we will provide you with a very entertaining discussion about books today, particularly science fiction and fantasy, with our guest. But in the meantime, I'd like to introduce you to my co-host, Nadia Giordana. Hi, glad you're here, which we always are. <laughs> Hi, Sue. I'm happy to be here today. And Ty Goodwin is here with us today as well. Hi, Ty. Hello. I'm happy to be here as well. And we've got Lynn Garthwaite. Good morning. Good Hi. morning. And our special guest today is Phyllis Moore. Hello, Phyllis. Hi, Susan. Good to be here. Oh, we are so glad to have you. And what makes it really interesting is that you are an author, but you're an author of such interesting books. You write science fiction and fantasy. Mm -hmm. So first question, what's the difference between science fiction and fantasy books? Well, science fiction books are have some sort of real live science in it. Sometimes it's very hardcore science. The, the book is, the plot is around a particular science. Sometimes there are stories like Star Trek or Star Wars where they bend the science. But there's always science, a sort of a plausible, realistic type of science in the story. For fantasy, it's about magical creatures okay. like fairies and dragons and witches and that kind of stuff. And there's magic that bends reality and so one you kind of got to watch out for your facts and the other ones in fantasy I have to make up my world but I have to stick to the facts of my world hmm. and interesting that you write in both having read your books I was so thrilled with the uh, characters you created you have compelling interesting likable characters and so it made me wonder do you begin your process with characters in mind and kind of build a story around them or is it the other way around? Do you have a story in mind and you fit characters in? Or is it kind of a combination? Mm. I think it's a com combination. It's like I kind of get a, an idea and this person who's going to be in the story. And then as it goes along, I have to develop the world and develop the person in the story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, and then it goes back and forth. I write for a while. Maybe I'll get the whole story done, the whole uh, plot of the story, a couple hundred pages. But then I go back through and develop. Sure. The idea and the people and rewrite and that's the main thing about writing is the rewriting yes. and getting yeah. things right. <laughs> that's right. Now with this trilogy that you have, and I read the first two books and I understand you're working on the, th the third mm -hmm. and I thoroughly enjoyed the first two books. What I'm wondering is you were just mentioning how you get that outline of the story. Is that more one book at a time or did it evolve into being a trilogy or was it a trilogy in your mind all along? No, originally the People of Akane was one book mm -hmm. and then it became the People of Akane trilogy. Mm -hmm. And a novel is usually somewhere around 80,000 words. My book was 135,000. And I tried to cut it down and then when I started editing it started growing again. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I took everything that I had taken out and I put it back into the story and I divided it into three books. So it was a oh. big story to begin with. Yeah. So you had that entire timeline in your mind. There's just no way you could put it into one, one book. book. Well, okay. hundred, you know, that's a lot of pages right. that you're reading. Yeah. Pretty thick book. <laughs> Pretty thick book. And most people don't want to read that big of a book. Right. So, mm -hmm. But then it gave me the, the, uh, the advantage of developing the characters more and developing the world more. So it, it worked out to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. hmm. Have you always had this creative bent to you? I, I just can't even imagine doing what you're doing. I mean, did you have this when you were a kid and it's developed along the way into adulthood or how did this all Well, pop I through? started off with fine arts, drawing. My mother was an artist, so I drew. She was a photographer, so I took pictures. And sometime around in the 1990s, I got the idea for this for a different story that for a different series in my head and it wouldn't go away. <laughs> It got, kind of got stuck there, and I wrote like down like 4,000 years of history of this world wow. and the people wow. and blah, blah, blah. 
but it never developed into a book. But it's what got me started. And I took classes. I went back to college, and I took Remedier English and English 101 just to refresh my mm -hmm. writing. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the in, the, in Minneapolis, there's a, a, a school called The Loft for Writers. Mm -hmm. So I went to that school, and I took several classes there. I joined a writing group where people share their work and, and we critique it. And I read a whole heck of a lot of how-to books. <laughs> and so that's how that got started. Basically, the ideas come and my brain gets clogged up, so I have yep. to write them down yep. to clear out my brain Let and the most story comes. Let them out. <laughs> yep. So now, there are not a lot of women who write science fiction and fantasy. So how have you found, you know, your way in navigating that industry, you know, as a woman? Actually, there are quite a few. There are more men who write science fiction because it's, it's mm -hmm. math and science and whatever. Mm. But there are several women who do write very good science fiction, and there are more fantasy women write authors than there are men. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. I did not know I that. I didn't either. And there are more women who read both science fiction and fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. So do you have an interest in science to be writing science fiction then? I mean, yeah. is that something that you've always been interested in? And then you must have to do some research I'm assuming, mm -hmm. in whatever scientific theories are enmeshed into your book. Am, am mm -hmm. I right or not? Well, I, I've taken, a, I, I do like science. I did take a few classes in college. And I've always been interested in it. I'll read like articles and I read PBS and those kind of shows, but I'm not a scientist. I'm not that smart and a lot of the stuff, it's like I understand it, but I understand it in, in, in a layman's terms, not in a scientist's terms. Mm -hmm. So I did have to do research and I did I have a couple of PhD friends who read it and helped me so that you know that that doesn't make sense, Phyllis, yeah, or that's not the way it's done. <laughs> and so they were a big help. But it's not my books are not hardcore science. They're more about the characters. It's more of a character driven story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's that helped me out a lot. But if someone wants a hardcore science, they're going to have to go to someone else for that. <laughs> you know, I have to say, Phyllis, uh, as a compliment to your books, uh, I started reading science fiction when I was in junior high. And I, I read it for many years. Some of the science fiction books I read maybe would have appealed more to someone with more of a higher science mind, exactly what you're just talking about now. What I found about your books that I love is that I'm not that much of a scientist either. I love the idea of it and I love to be pulled along by that science fiction story, but I don't want to get bogged down in so much detail mm -hmm. that was unnecessary for the story and and yours does that. You actually give you that gives us that gave me that feeling of being on that spaceship and traveling through and being on that planet without losing the story in the in the science sci-fi detail proving the point so you do a fine job of that oh thank yes. you thank you how do you even begin to write dialogue to me it would be hard enough to even come up with either science fiction or fantasy to write a novel but then to engage in dialogue with characters seems insurmountable. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have been told that I write very good dialogue and I, I don't know why. Mm. Maybe because I grew up watching TV. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I've been, I don't want to sound like I'm being egotistical, but I have been told that I write, but I hear it in my head. Mm -hmm. And I just write it down. It just sounds logical. And people go, oh, wow, that really was really good, blah, blah, blah. But it's got to be, for me, it's got to be a gift because I don't have to work at that. Mm -hmm. The most difficult for me is description. Mm -hmm. That's what I have to work out. Descriptions of the characters, Of the people, the of the land, of the mm -hmm. events. I want to write the plot, and then you just put whatever you want in there. Right. I can't do that. Right. I have to fill out Part the pages the and fill out the world. And mm. But once yeah. you know your characters as well as you do when you've been working on them that mm. long, the dialogue kind of comes to answer. You, you understand yeah. how this person would express those thoughts yeah. and, and it's different than how the other characters mm -hmm. would. A lot of the complaints about 
some fiction is is you find that characters all speak the same, you know, mm -hmm. as if they have the same voice. And, and in real life, that's not true. Yeah. But when you really truly know your characters, you you understand how they'd speak, and it yeah. probably pours out more naturally. Then that is something that I am learning to try and to develop that part of the dialogue. Mm -hmm. To different characters have different. Like when I first wrote the book, when I was working on it, everybody called her Jessie. And the editor said, well, no, because people, different people will say. So then I changed it to Jessica, Jesse, Jess, mm -hmm. because people Depending give you different your, nicknames. Right. Yeah. So that is That's something that I am learning to do, to try and develop and the way in which people talk. Some people are more technical, right. whereas Jessica was, was like close enough because she's not a scientist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With your fantasy, are there certain fantasy, I don't know if the word is character, or I mean, do you like werewolves, or do you like fairies, oh. or do you like... <laughs> do you have a specific genre? Yeah, genre. the genre, genre, thank you. Yeah. I'm not into the horror. I like the more lighthearted. Mm -hmm. Like, I like, I read all of the Harry Potter series, that mm -hmm. kind of story. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm not into werewolves or vampires. I know some people really like them. Mm -hmm. I don't like I don't like zombies because they're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very visual and it's right. just like I'd have to have you'd my have eyes to, closed you'd the have whole time. You'd have to put yeah. them on the cover and that would ruin so it. So yeah, that would so no, I like I like the more lighthearted, the fan the the like you said, the fairies and the dragons and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And books like science fiction and fantasy both have such a broad audience, you know, it could be from a, a young child to a grandmother, you know, mm -hmm. and both genders, whatever is brought. And I know from my own experience, I have a son who's now 32, but when he was learning to read, he was kind of a reluctant reader. And it wasn't until he discovered science fiction mm -hmm. that it just took off. He read every Asimov, Heinlein, mm -hmm. Bradbury. Yeah. I yep. mean, that totally got him into reading and whatever. And to this day, it's still one of his favorite genres. So probably even got him into science. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, a lot of that stuff is, is yeah. science. Sure, more because you become science, curious yeah. and then you want yeah. to learn more about the real science. And yeah, so it's a wonderful genre in that respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Einstein said that if you want your children to be geniuses, have them read fantasy. Oh, and if you really? want them to be more of a genius, have them read more fantasy. Because <laughs> <laughs> books like fantasy and science fiction open up minds, your right. child's mind, so that they're not all left-brained, but it shows them to, there's options, right. and it gets them, a lot of these, these guys who invented our cell phones and Facebook and all that, uh -huh. they all grew up playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Okay. They were all mm -hmm. fantasy fans, yep. and it, they it, dared exactly. to dream. They dared to dream, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. a lot of the stuff they invented, you can see it on Star Trek today. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. What age group are your books geared for? I'm having problems with that, because I have there's a, teenagers that have read it and loved it, 20-year-old men have read it, 35-year-old, I have a 64-year-old grandmother. Mm -hmm. You guys I have read it, it and liked it. I felt it was fine for me. Right. Yeah. So it, I seem to be, I have trouble grouping an audience, because it seems like everybody who's, I mean, there are some people that read it and go, you got to be joking, this is the worst book I've ever read. Oh, <laughs> but that happens with everything, right. you know. Mm -hmm. There's one or two people that just like, yeah, I don't buy this book. But most of the time, I'm getting really good reviews from people that, mm -hmm. that like it in right. all ages. Like so it's a pretty broad, broad audience, yeah. and, and I, w I would have guessed that. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and there are some people that have said, well, I don't like science fiction, but uh, it's yours, so and I like you, so I'll look at it. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, this is a really good book. Yeah. Where's the next one? <laughs> right. uh, and tell us about your cover art. How did you come up? Did you design those? I did design these. Very colorful. These. Very Do I hold it where yeah. I show these? Yeah. I did. I have a degree in graphics. Okay. Oh, so that, that was helps. it. And then, of course, like you were saying, you talk to people who are professionals who offered help. And I did not design the font for this book. Somebody okay. else did that. Mm -hmm and then somebody else designed the jacket for me. Mm -hmm. It's surprising how important something like font is, mm -hmm. you know, that tells us a story about what's inside the book. So mm -hmm. it's good to get some back feedback and, on that. And the color. I mean, how did I you know. even decide on color and what artwork would you determine would best fit the title and the content? Mm -hmm. Well, for this book, uh, Pegasus Colony, I got this world. This, I went on iStock. And I went through it for science fiction. Mm -hmm. I found the picture with the world in it. And then when I went back for this book, I got another world. Mm -hmm. 
And then I went back and I found another world. Of that one, the next third. was coming That'll up as orange. That'll be third book. My okay. third book. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I stuck with that theme of worlds, but they're not all exactly alike. They're, they're set up differently. Right. So that mm -hmm. the type, the font is exactly the same places, mm -hmm. and it's exactly the same type. But the worlds are a little bit. And then the lady that designed the back of the cover, she also, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you can see they that. They look nice yeah. as a set. They yeah, look they nice do. as a set. How did you so. come up with the name of your worlds, and how do you do? You have a process for coming up with the names of characters and other things. Oh, that are, names know. are hard. Yeah, names are hard. Sometimes they just pop in your head and they stay there, and other times, it's Jessica started off being as a man. She was Sean somebody or other, <laughs> and nobody liked him, and he didn't sound <laughs> like a man. And he was an archaeologist, and he didn't sound like an archaeologist. And fine, so I changed <laughs> it to a woman. And then somebody read it and said, she's boring, and I don't really care what happens to her. <laughs> and I went, okay. So I put the book to the side and worked on something else. Then I came back to the book, and I improved her. And people said, well, we like her, but she's kind of too negative. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I made her not so negative, and then it was like, yeah, yeah, we like her now. Uh -huh. So it's good to have Quite people the yeah, to go through yeah. the process, because if I'd have stuck with Sean, I'd have had a failed book. Yeah. And when, if I wouldn't have made her nicer, they would have liked it, but it would have been okay. But now when people read it, everybody likes Jessica because I listened to what people had to say about her. But even likable characters need, usually have some kind of flaw or something that yeah. you know, butts up against other people. I mean, that's just part of, that's human Yeah, but, but she was too much doing that. Yeah. And then everybody else, her friends were saying, she's so negative. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, okay, I'll ease up a little bit on there. So she's still negative, but she's not annoyingly negative. Gotcha. She has to be real anyway. So. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we all get a little negative around the edges at yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm curious now when you talk about getting that feedback from various folks and having to go in and reframe, in this case, Jessica, how frustrating, well, I mean, I, I'm sure you welcomed that feedback, but at the same time, how mm -hmm. frustrating was it for you mm -hmm. to not only in terms of having to do more work, but to have framed Jessica this certain way, seen her that way in your head, and now you have to change her, and she doesn't fit how you had originally seen her. I, how difficult is that? Well, I told you earlier, I started off as an artist, and I went through high school, and I went to college originally for fine arts, and eventually graduated in graphics. The whole time I was in college, every week I had to put something up on the board. Mm -hmm. A photograph, a drawing, a painting, a graphics. So for like, however I was in, how long I was in college, because I was, went more than four years because I changed majors, so it was like maybe six years. For the six years, every week, I got critiqued. Mm -hmm. And then when I hit, started writing, and people started critiquing my work, I was already used to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But people who have never been critiqued before, and you put your heart and your soul and you've written something brilliant and mm -hmm. you give it to somebody and they go, it's boring. <laughs> right. it's like, those people kind of, <gasps> oops, sorry. Those people just kind of, because they're not used to it. And I understand, mm -hmm. but you need, you need the criticism, constructive right. criticism, yeah. because stories become better. I can't be rigid and say, you know what? He's Sean, and if you don't get it, that's your problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because if you don't get it, a thousand other people won't mm -hmm. get it. Yeah. And I need to listen to the audience. Right. I need to yeah. listen to the wisdom of the people that are saying, you know, I like it, but. Yeah. And I need to work with the but. If you don't clean things up, if you don't, you know, make the difference, yeah. it won't get better. I think that's... I uh, oh, go ahead. I think that's one of the things that most writers, when they start, we don't realize. And we, like, I think all of us here, like, have written books. And I remember the first time giving my book to the editor and getting it back. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. It's not perfect. Yeah, <laughs> it's marked up. <laughs> yeah. So that's how long did it take you to write it then? Well, I don't know because I started it and worked on it for a couple of years, and then I put it off to the mm -hmm. side, and then I picked it up and started on it again, and then I wrote the entire book and then decided it's never going to go anywhere. Mm. But then a, a publisher looked at it and says, yeah, yeah, this is good. You really need to finish it. And then I finished it. And then I've been sick for a while, so I got put on hold again. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been many years that I've been going through this, but I'm finally on the third book. I've got it all written, and now I'm going to go through it and develop stuff, and then I'll get it edited and 
will be published. I'm wondering what got you started because you're writing some fantasy novellas. I think it's a, is it a series of novellas yep. or just one? Series. Uh, tell us about novellas. A novel is any words from 40,000 to 100,000 words. That's 300 pages to five, six, seven, eight hundred pages. And this is a really busy world these days, and not everyone has the time to read 800 pages. Mm -hmm. But they still want to read. Mm -hmm. they, they enjoy the reading. Right now, in this time, because there's so much going on around us, novellas are becoming big because they're fast readers. They're between 17,000 and 40,000 words. Mm -hmm. And that's one to 200 pages. And most people can read that in an afternoon. Here's a question. Uh, it occurred to me because I am not a novel writer. I admire anybody who can write a novel. I, it just overwhelms me. Is it naive to think, oh, I can't write a novel, but a novella, because it's shorter, will be easier and a better place to start? <laughs> or is it the opposite of that? Well, people say if you're supposed to start with short stories. But I could never write a short story because my stories kept getting longer and longer. <laughs> <sighs> but I think it's what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. Some people actually make a living at writing short stories, a couple of mm -hmm. page stories. And there are those who make a living at writing novels. And then there's someone like Michael, I forget his rear, who wrote The Martian, oh, his yeah. first mm -hmm. book. Uh -huh. He made a movie out of it. Mm -hmm. He's probably never even written a short story. <laughs> right. So it's what's in your heart and what you want to work on <coughs> and what you like to do. And that's what you need to, to follow. It kind of reminds me, though, of for children's writing, people think that a picture book must be so easy to write because it's so short. And it turns out that's not the case at all. You still need to tell a compelling <coughs> story. You still need to have interesting characters. But you have to be able to do it in so few words. So shorter isn't always easier, but it sure looks that way. Yeah. That's right. I write. I'm a part of, I'm on the blog. And I'm a part of writing challenges. Mm -hmm. And somebody will put up a photograph, and I have to write a whole story in 100 words. Oh, wow. That's tough. A beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm. And then same thing with the children's book. You've got to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it doesn't matter how long. Right. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You've got to have characters you want to follow. You've got to have a plot that you want to stick to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard that's what makes short, writing short stories harder. Right. Because you don't have as much length to work with, and you've got to get all of those elements that tell a compelling story mm -hmm. and actually take the reader from beginning to end right. in such a short space. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What, would you, what advice would you give to somebody who has a yearning to write a novel. I can't even imagine that anybody <laughs> would, but because <laughs> I think it would be so difficult. But oh. what what advice would you give them? Let's say they've got some of this creativity that you do and they want to put it together in the form of writing. How how would you encourage them to get started? Well, very few people are geniuses that can just sit down and write a novel. I mean, there's a few people that never went to school, never read books, and the books are in them. Mm -hmm. The rest of us, normal people, <laughs> we have to learn. And I would say take classes. Mm -hmm. Go back to take mm -hmm. English classes, get your English oh. up to par. Take creative writing classes. I would suggest about creative writing classes, though, is to read the work that the students have produced. Because if you don't like the, the kind of material that the, that the teacher is producing from these students, you're not going to like the teacher. Hmm. And yeah. if you like the material, the quality of material, then I would say take the teacher. I, I would do that with, with painting. I would look at the, the paintings that came out of someone's class, and I'm thinking, yeah, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. And others, it was like, wow, I, yeah, I, I want to learn from that one. So you can see who a teacher is by the kind of the quality that they produce in their students. <laughs> That's a great tip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then read how-to books. There's a lot of brilliant how-to books out there. And then also read a lot of novels in the genre, yep, too. Read a lot of I novels think, in the genre. I think the more, and people are afraid, well, if I read a lot, am I going to end up accidentally stealing material? And I've heard that that's pretty much nonsense 
the more you read, the better you are. And you might have little tidbits in there, but basically you know you're what? creating your own version of things. Everybody is been is copying from it. not that mm -hmm. they're plagiarizing, but everybody's being inspired. Yes. Right. And inspired. there are times that I, I'm stuck on a thought and I can't clear it out. I can't get it together. And then I'm either watching TV or I'm watching PBS. Mm -hmm. or I'm reading a book and I go. Oh, <laughs> Something there's makes sense. my answer. Right. That's how I want to do it. Right. You know, one thing that I'm impressed with what you said you did is you said you went and took an English class again. Mm -hmm. And I know when I was writing my second book, I really struggled sometimes and thought, I need to go back and take a college mm -hmm. class on grammar, mm -hmm. punctuation, yeah. mm -hmm. using active voice, we all forget. of that stuff mm -hmm. that you forget. And I thought, okay, I've, I've got a doctorate. Nobody ever said anything when I was writing my dissertation that I should have done blah, blah, blah. But I knew in my heart of hearts that I was missing things. And so to hear you say that, mm -hmm. I. To me, that's what I've gotten out of your mm -hmm. conversation. One of the strongest is, I mean, you have a mm -hmm. college degree and yet you went back to sort of refresh your mind about what is good mm -hmm. writing. Um, and I just applaud you for that. Well, I wish you. I would have done it, because mm -hmm. I, I know. Well, you still can. <laughs> well, I'm done writing oh. now. It's, it's, I'm done with that. Okay. But even going online, I would read online, OK, mm -hmm. when do you put that comma, and right. when do you not, mm -hmm. and when is it a semicolon, and uh, And thank goodness for editors who yes, can answer those questions right. for us. Yep. Yep. That's I right. just learned, because I, I, the book, I just just finished this, my first fantasy, My Haunted Bed and Breakfast, and I just put it up on Amazon. And I, as I was reading it for the last time, I realized all these commas I put in there are gone. So I emailed my editor and I said, what happened to the commas? And she said, oh, well, things have changed. <laughs> Oh, that's and the Oxford comma thing. Yeah, they oh. took all the commas like out the because people comma. didn't know how to use them yes. or haven't been using <laughs> right. them. And so it's easier. Quite the controversy. It's easier just to eliminate them. Mm -hmm. And she used to be the comma queen. Mm -hmm. Oh. She just, I mean, she made sure every comma was where it belonged. Were you happy with the changes, though, or well, was it something I thought, disconcerting? I thought, oh, well, I mean, it's already done. I'm right, not going yeah, back right, to do it again. Right, right. And I just so thought, well, that's the way it is. Right. Instead of training and teaching, we're just going to eliminate. So right, mm. that's interesting. But yeah. good tips for those out there, especially when you get ready to send out a manuscript. You know, mm. have somebody look at it for those yeah. things. Have that and editor. editor the editors thing varies from editor to editor. Yeah. It does. True. It does. And even if you're writing um, scholarly work, there's differences in where the comma goes if it's based on. Mm -hmm. uh, AP or whatever right. other yeah. style right. of writing. So, uh, but that was interesting. You got yeah. that tip. Yeah. It is confusing. Well, our time is up. And Phyllis, I can't tell you how interesting it's been hearing about your journey in writing both fantasy and science fiction. Thank you for that. And Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to reading your books. Can't wait for the third one. <laughs> oh, cool. Yep. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And thank you to my co-hosts mm -hmm. as well. And thank you for joining us on It's a Woman's World. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.